Well, howdy y'all, welcome back to The Social Regressive. I am happy to announce that I picked the right boot. In that last video, I had 10 different pairs of boots that I tested out, it was about 1,500 bucks worth of boots. And uh, I wanted to find one that would actually fit my foot, one that felt like it flexed correctly, and one that was gonna work for my upcoming hikes. Well, I just got back from Salt Lake City, and I also spent some time in Colorado. In, in total, in Colorado, I probably did about Oh, I don't know, 40 miles of uh, hiking, you know, little day hikes, and then one overnighter out there. And then uh, in Salt Lake City, I probably put down another, oh, I don't know, 15 or so. But then I also wore these at a convention, so I don't know, I, I, I may have as much as 100 uh, miles into these boots so far, and I can give them a clean bill of health. Uh, the hikes that we did out in Colorado tended to be uh, kind of steep in some areas. For the most part, they were pretty sedate. Uh, they were well-worn trails. Uh, we didn't really do any bushwhacking this time, but there were certain areas that were rather rocky. Uh, there was certainly a lot of loose dirt. And um, yeah, just as a reminder, the boot that I picked, this is the Keen Targi 3, and uh, these are in 11 wide. These Keen boots tend to run wider than all of the others to begin with, uh, but Apparently my foot is some kind of freak, so I do have the wide. So if you're somebody that like me that just has, uh, yeah, a bit of a broader foot, these are going to be your ticket. Uh, the Moabs weren't bad, the, the Moab wides, those felt good, but some of the others, even that uh, were in the wide shape, uh, they just did not fit me at all, and they would have worn the, the, the skin right off the sides of my feet. But yeah, uh, some of the things that I can mention overall, you can see the appearance here. It looks like it has, you know, gotten pretty well scuffed up. And part of that is just the way that this is designed. Uh, this started out with kind of an olive color. And if it gets even just slightly scratched, it starts to put uh, kind of a, a lighter brown into the coloration. So even if you hadn't, you know, gone on a really big hike, it kind of looks like you have. But the leather itself, even though, you know, it has that kind of discoloration going on, it's still in fantastic shape. Uh, this is wonderful. And I imagine that this is gonna last me a really long time. This is the waterproof model. And I know that we had talked before about how I was considering since I live here in Oklahoma, and this is where I actually do most of my hiking, uh, whether I should get something that's vented, more of a jungle boot instead of a waterproof. So here are kind of my first notes on how this was out in the field. Uh, this could handle any amount of water that I could throw at it uh, as long as it didn't get over that tongue gusset, as long as you know, it didn't get past that part of the fabric. And actually, sometimes it did get a little over that and it still didn't make it past uh, just because it was uh, properly laced up and I had it kind of tight. Uh, so yeah, the waterproofing works extremely well. I will mention one thing though, uh, I had these in creeks and I had them in rain and I you know, kind of splashed on them. I actually took the hose once and just kind of sprayed my feet and nothing came through. But there is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. So if you're looking at some of the comments on boots out there, or you're looking at a review, a lot of people will talk about, I walked through the grass and my feet got soaked. So far, I have not encountered a boot that that won't do that which is really strange. I've talked to my wife about this. Um, you know, why in the world, when you walk through dewy grass, that your feet get wet? I, for some reason, I don't get it. I guess it's maybe the speed of your boot going through the grass that just kind of forces it through the membrane. Uh, that seems to be the ultimate test of waterproofing. And uh, everything else, like snow, creeks, and all that, d just don't really seem to compare. So if you see people talking about that, don't worry about it. It's probably a perfectly waterproof boot. It's just that it gets through all of them. But, okay, waterproofing in Oklahoma can be kind of a problem. This place is really warm. It's really humid. Most of the year, it is warm. It'll get plenty, you know, it'll get cool and cold into the winter. But for the most part, we have really warm, humid conditions, and a boot like this can be just awful. And actually, I got uh, conditions kind of like that in Colorado, uh, especially. It was getting up to about 90 during the day, even up there in the mountains. And yes, my feet did get sweaty up there. Yes, this did kind of hold in some of the, uh, the humidity but I can't really complain much. This handled it actually really well, much better than you might expect for the limited amount of uh, fabric that you see here. It seems to do a really good job of wicking away from the foot 
and somehow venting it out up out the top or through the uh, the fabric. So yeah, good on Keen. Their Keen Dry is actually pretty darn good. I like it quite a bit. And I don't think I'm gonna miss the uh, the ventilation so much. I, I still have my eye on those uh, the, the regular Keen vent. Uh, if I get into some Oklahoma uh, backpacking around here and I find that these actually do get a little bit too swampy on me. Fit overall is fantastic for my foot. It fits me perfectly. I don't even have to lace these up extremely you know, hard or anything. With certain boots that I've had, I've had to lace them up a whole bunch so that my foot doesn't move around a whole lot on the inside and pick up blisters that way. This one just seems like it was built for my foot overall. And as far as motion goes, uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, these just always want to move. Yes, they're stable when you're standing and they're stable when you're climbing, but something about the shape of this, uh, this little toe area here, how it's rounded, and how we have this shorter uh, toe box right here, this did not, it just wanted to keep moving all the time if I was uh, walking. This is one that aids instead of kind of fighting back against you while you're moving. And this toe, since it is shorter, it didn't want to trip. I would notice when I was uh, hiking with others that maybe there'd be rocks that they would catch their toes on. And I very, very rarely ever knocked my foot against anything. And if I did, of course, I have this wonderful armor that you can see uh, covering the whole toe cap. This is one that felt very stable. There were some times that I slipped on scree, but overall, I think, um, it, it compared very favorably to anything that I've ever hiked with before. This is one that grips sideways and forward. And um, I think the, the times that I slipped, I could count on one hand and all the stuff that I did. In fact, it may have only been like maybe two or three times. And uh, yeah, I, I'm right here. So I didn't, apparently I didn't sprain my ankle and get eaten by bears. When the going got technical, these, uh, the toe here worked very well. So I was able to go up certain difficult sections if I needed to, if I needed to go up rocks, um, if I needed to go up a steep slope on something, and this could handle it just fine. And the heel, I think that if there's any one uh, consideration for those of you that might be considering backpacking, once you get a li little extra weight in your pack, uh, the heel doesn't have quite as much cushion as your average backpacking boot. So after a full day of pounding on that, yeah, you can start to feel it through there. I could start to feel just a little bit of bruising, but part of that is uh, the fact that I, I was so out of shape too. You know, I haven't really done anything in a long time. And um, yeah, still, I think that some of the others would have protected a little bit more, but it does have a very good hit, good heel strike, good roll all the way through. It doesn't feel like you hit and then kind of flop down. It feels like you hit, squish, and then you just roll through the foot. So great uh, kind of uh, kinetic movement going through here. As far as weight goes, I've mentioned that these are not the lightest, but they are certainly light enough for me. One of the greatest things about both of the hikes that I did is I didn't really think about my feet. And I had, that was actually the thing that I thought about as I was going along. It's like, why am I not concerned about my feet? Why am I not getting any blisters? Why am I not bruising up? Um, these just kind of, they're like a second skin and they absorb those impacts and make everything feel really good. So as far as a, a natural boot goes, uh, I really give these top honors. They feel wonderful. Now the companion pieces to all of this uh, would be some of the other things that I was wearing. Um, I know that part of the reason that I just really don't get blisters anymore while I go hiking is the quality of sock that I have. So actually, if I wanna give anything a 100% clean bill of health, it's these darn tough socks. Buy these. Of all the different socks that I've tried, these do the best of not swamping the foot, of moving moisture away, and uh, preventing any blisters from building up. I didn't have to do any kind of taping, no moleskin, no nothing. I just wore these and they just kind of took a whole lot of abuse. These have a really thick cushion right here. These are their boot socks, uh, full cushion. And um, yeah, they, they just have quite a bit of cushion in the toe and in the heel. There's a little bit, I think these have a little bit less right in the, uh, through the arch area. And uh, yeah, these are ones that get, a, that kind of fill the boot a little bit more and uh, they can make it just a little bit warmer. For some of the days that were especially warm, I went with these instead. These are the darn tough crew. I think these are the, the quarter cushion. 
Uh, these have a pretty thick cushion on the bottom. I'll actually put links to everything down below so you can pick these out if you want to get the exact socks. Uh, but these have kind of a vented material. It's thinner up at the top and it allows a lot of that moisture and a lot of that heat to come up straight into the boot and be evacuated from there. But yeah, you still get lots of cushion in here. And then splitting the difference, I have this guy. This one has full cushion all the way around, much like this one. And, um, but it, does, it is a little bit thinner on the top. So again, it can kind of vent more up out the top. And of course, these are colors that I love right here. Uh, one other thing that I took with me on these hikes that uh, I just have to mention is the, uh, the True Spec. This is their uh, Eco shirt. What is this called? I think this is called the Eco Tac or something. It's made from recycled um, water bottles. And this sucker right here is uh, my, my favorite shirt for outdoor stuff in general. You can see that it has this uh, kind of mesh vented material running right up the side, up through the armpit and under the arm. Uh, so it, it has a little bit of a thicker material to it. I've taken this out in coolish weather through hot weather. Uh, does a good job of absorbing a lot of the sweat and moving it off and evaporating it off. But then you do get this little bit of extra right here for those warm days. Uh, as an Oki, I really appreciate this shirt because it can handle kind of all weather that I can throw at it. And if it gets cold, I can just put a base layer under this and it continues to function. And it also has, where are these things? There we go. It has little pockets for Slim Jims, one on each shoulder. That's so kind of them. One of the other cool things about this is that it's long enough that it can actually tuck down into the pants. That's the way that I go when I backpack to prevent uh, the pack from rubbing against my back. And uh, yeah, it worked really well and has that wonderful slick fabric. So I didn't really get any uh, kind of abrasions around the waistband either. Um, so yeah, I think everything worked out really well. All the gear that I had was just fantastic. I really uh, appreciated how well it upheld me and kept me going through all that stuff. Uh, took up the weight and really I didn't have to think about anything except the trail ahead of me as I was going on. And that to me is the measure of some good gear. Thanks a lot for watching y'all. Make sure that you uh, like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We're gonna get back to rifle optics and other goodies here in a bit, but uh, of course you guys know that I love other outdoor activities, so who knows what we might come up with next. See you around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.